Brown boxing, and I'm back in the building. Shout out to the LDBC. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. Man, it's Monday morning, and I had some boxing on my brain. And I was just thinking about a video I watched and a lot of situations surrounding boxing, like in the past few years. So I want to talk about. Um, first, I want to make an example, a couple, of, well, a couple of examples that I have in my head about the first example being when Sean Porter fought Kell Brook. And he lost his IBF belt. After that fight happened, the fight that we wanted to see was Kell Brook unify in the welterweight division. Not Sean Porter to lose it. Um, when Danny Garcia lost his WBC belt to Keith Thurman, we wanted Keith Thurman to unify with Earl Spence. Not Danny Garcia fight Errol Spence coming off of a loss. Because we knew the guys coming off of losses in that situation, they needed to redeem themselves. They needed to build themselves back up. No matter what, how you want to cut it, no matter how you see it. And that those two examples, Danny Garcia and Sean Porter, you know, they came out with the L and they have to build themselves up like anyone else. Now, I find it strange, I find it very strange when it comes to this whole Jared Hurd and Jamel Charlo situation, people seem like they're ignoring, it seems like, well, for me, it seems like people are ignoring, ignoring the fact that Jamel Charlo took an L. So why would Jared Hurd, the unified champion at 154, have his focus on a guy that just lost the fight? Now, I understand that there are talks about a rematch coming up in June for Tony Harrison and um, Jamel Charlo. But just like the example I gave before, after Keith Thurman beat Danny Garcia, we wanted Keith Thurman to unify with another guy in the division. You know, Keith Thurman, he was a unified guy. We wanted unification. We wanted one face, one name for the division. So my whole thing is, let's keep that same standard for when it, when it comes to 154. Jamel Charlo, I like the guy. He's a great fighter, very entertaining. But he has Tony Harrison problems. You know, Jamel Charlo, people make it seem like... To me, I think Jamel Charlo is, you know, he's overhyped. People make it seem like Jamel Charlo can just... Like it's some... I don't They make it just seem like it's an easy prediction to predict that Jamel Charlo could beat Jared Hurd. And I couldn't disagree. I couldn't disagree more for the simple fact that Jared Hurd has stepped up on numerous occasions and he's fought tough competition that went against his style. And it's not like Jared Hurd doesn't have experience. I mean, I've said it plenty of times before in previous videos. Jamel Charlo was that he was on top of 154 way before Jared Hurd came around and he had an opportunity to make a lot of these fights like the J. Rock Williams fight, like the Aristotle Lee Laurel fight, like the Austin Trout fight prior to Austin Trout being stopped for the first time in his career by Jared Hurd. So Jared Hurd, he's been there, he's done it, but he wasn't the first guy on the scene. And to me, that gives Jared Hurd the best resume that makes Jared Hurd the most accomplished between the two. And stylistically, I mean, I've seen Jared Hurd beat better boxers than Jamel Charlo. Now, when it comes to the whole newfound power of Jamel Charlo that a lot of people like to speak on, to me, I think it's, at this point, I think it's more hype than anything. I think it's hype due to the fact that he trains with Earl Spence and uh, the um, genuine hype, you know, nothing fictional. When the um, real hype to run at Earl Spence is rubbing off on Jamel Charlo, you know, people are putting Jamel on a, a higher pedestal than what I see he deserved. I mean, he stopped. Jamel Charlo had got vicious stoppages against John Jackson. John Jackson, a fighter that 
went on the contender and lost. Um, he lost against, I mean, he got a vicious stop against a pup and Erickson Lubin, a fighter that many of us already knew that um, wasn't ready for a Jamel Charlo fight. Outside of that, Jamel Charlo's not out here stopping the top guys, the B-level guys, the B-plus level guys in the 154-pound division. Why? Because he's not even fighting those guys. Jamel Charlo had the opportunity to fight the Loras, to fight the J-Rocks, to fight the Austin Trout. Remember, he didn't even stop Austin Trout. So all of this newfound power that people keep talking about Jamel Charlo has, and that's what's going to um, get in the way of Jared Hurd defeating him, like, I don't see it at all. I don't see the power that they're talking about, and I don't see the boxing ability that they're talking about that's going to give Jared Hurd a bunch of fits. Like I said already, and like we already know, Jared Hurd got Laura out of there. Well, he got the victory over Laura. He knocked him down. He beat him down. He broke him down in brutal fashion. And the whole purpose of this video is because the whole Jared Hurd basically won the fight. Errol Spence talk. Now, I don't see anything wrong with it. You know, I've seen comments and people saying that Jared Hurd, you know, he needs to worry about Jamel, and that was the whole inspiration of this video. But, guys, I mean, we got to take into consideration what's going on at the 160-pound division. We see Jamal Charlo. You know, he's being iced out. He can't get a fight due to uh, Eddie Hearn and the zone and due to Oscar De La Hoya with Canelo. So I don't see the rush in Jerry Hurd wanting to go up to 160 pounds. And these guys want to be champions and they want to run a division. They're going to have to get an opportunity from the other champions in the weight class. And it seemed like they're getting, um, you know, they're getting iced out. Well, how I think that's how Anthony Joshua likes to call it. So Jamel Charlo, I mean, no. So Jared Hurd wanted to fight Earl Spence at 154 before he goes to middleweight. I think it's a good thing. I mean, if Earl Spence wants to fight, great. If he doesn't, that's fine, too. Earl Spence isn't obligated to fight him. Earl Spence has a lot of business that he can still take care of at 147. But if the Keith Thurmans of the world is not going to fight him, if Sean Porter, if he beats Sean Porter, and then it's still all of this extra bullshit surrounding the whole top rank situation, I mean, what do we want to do? We want Jared Hurd. I mean, we want Earl Spence to stick around at 147 for years and continue to fight Luis Colazzo and... Um, all these lower tier guys that we know he can walk through. I mean, that's not what I want to see. You know, I want to see the best guys fight the best. And on the PBC side, between 147 and 154, you got a lot of the top guys. Now, when it comes to Jared Hurd and Errol Spence, those are my top two favorite fighters. It's not a number one, number two. It's a 1A and 1B, and they can change on any given day. But with that being said, it's a great fight and saying that – um. Jared Hurd needs to focus on Jamel Charlo is absolutely ridiculous. I can, you know, I gave multiple examples when a guy coming off of a loss, he's losing his belt. He's never the guy people say, oh, yeah, he needs to, uh, he's not the guy that people are saying that he should be focused on. But it's Nino Brown Boxing. Shout out to the LDBC, and I'm out.